Ladies and gentlemen, the polar vortex is back and it is taking over the majority of the U.S. Most of you may not hit the real cold temperatures like we will in the Midwest and Northeast, but um, even people in more Western states and South um, <clears throat> regions of the country are experiencing cooler temperatures and, and it's coming from the same polar vortex. Spring put on hold as storm rolls across US and polar air arrives. We are going down in the teens. And I think what made the first one really bad was the wind on top of the temperatures made it feel like, I, I know one day it was like minus nine because of the wind chill. So it, it, you know, it's a very common occurrence and we were told it was going to happen again. You know, the one that happened in February would not be the last one. And here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the Washington Post, March 3rd, 2019. Um, there is also one I want to show you. Let me just get this over here. <clears throat> just take a look at this map. This map shows you all of the areas that are impacted by the polar vortex, whole area in blue. I mean, this is just crazy. Wow. So they're already telling you that the forecast um, for March 7th through 11, 2019 shows colder than average temperatures. All right, let's get back to this. The weather people claim March 1st is the start of a meteorological spring, but March 1st arrived Friday and this alleged conjured, hypnotized meteorological spring was a no-show. Dare we say it flaked on us and we had a uh, bone chilling snow shower last night and you know everything out there will be frozen by tonight because we're going down to 16 degrees much of the continental u.s is cold wet and stormy with the notable outlier of southern florida <laughs> okay uh, i think florida is like one of those places that's really not affected by this at all uh, where it has been summer for many weeks. A uh, brutally cold Arctic air mass invaded the nation's midsection this weekend and sent temperatures to levels normally associated with January. The nation's official low temperature at midday Sunday was a nippy minus 44 degrees. Wow, in Mosby, Montana. Yeah, that, that is cold as hell. The National Weather Service warned the temperatures between Montana and Kansas would be 50 degrees below normal. A fast moving storm system has swept west to east across the country. The system incited severe thunderstorms, flash flood warnings, and tornado watches. And some of you might have heard about the tornadoes that hit Georgia and Alabama. It is up to 23 people now. You know, I know when I first woke up, it said 22, but now reports are coming out saying 23 people. Um, officials in Lee County, Alabama reported 22 people died during the severe weather um, in which pounding winds, rains and tornadoes down power lines and damaged buildings. Uh, search and rescue teams were scouring uh, the damage Sunday evening uh, for other possible deaths or injuries. And you know what? It, the worst part is when tornadoes happen at night. We had one happen uh, around the corner from me. It, thank goodness it didn't hit my street, but it did hit the streets on the other side. And when you drove down there, there were so many downed trees, homes were damaged, siding was off, roofs were damaged. And I mean, it was almost like every single tree 
in someone's yard was toppled over. <laughs> and from that tornado that hit my area, it took them nearly into the summer to get all of the trees out. It was so many that were down. So I know how devastating that can be. All right, y'all. Boston, which was buried in more than 100 inches of snow four years ago, but largely has been spared this year, could see six to eight inches of wet snow before the storm races into Maine and enters the Canadian Maritimes. So it's going to be bad all over. So they're talking about um, rain in Washington, um, frozen temperatures in the Northwest. Residents in Frederick, Maryland, were still expecting four to eight inches of snow. Now my area, it said two to four inches. Arctic blast in the nation's midsection is a repeat of what happened in January when the polar vortex, a very cold air mass that normally circulates in the Arctic, broke into pieces with a fragment hurling south and creating dangerously cold conditions in the lower 48 states. So they are going through a repeat of January. That is, woo, that's devastating because I will never forget how cold it was. The quirky behavior of the polar vortex is caused by a dip in the jet stream and is associated with a warm air mass that pulsed north into Canada. Um, the timing is unfortunate. I think people this year are less prepared for this kind of cold wave. And especially in some areas where things started to bud and bloom. And that's very true because I have a tree <laughs> and I can see the little buds all over the tree. You know, you can see that as early as February in my area. So um, in addition to being cold and stormy, America is soggy. Tennessee, for example, is the land of flooded basements. And the big storm is sending more water down the dangerously swollen Mississippi River. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineer in recent days has diverted water from the river to ease the flooding hazard in New Orleans and other cities. Wow. Uh, the National Weather Service said February set a record in the continental United States for the proportion of the country that received more than 10 inches of rain. That is a huge amount of rain in just four weeks. And by his tabulation, 5.5% of the country reached or exceeded that mark. Wow. He noted that the records date only to 1969, but it, it is remarkable that the past three Februaries have been historically very wet. His summation of the weather now, it's wet and miserable. Yeah. And well, for us, it's cold and miserable. Uh, but what are you going to do? There's no getting around these conditions, and a lot of people have died just from the polar vortex the last time. You know, people went out and were found frozen in their yards. Some people were in their garages, and a man froze inside of his garage. You know, when the temperature goes down to the minuses, you should really think about going out there. And if you have a job that requires you to be out, because we remember the FedEx worker that froze to death, I did a story on that. You know, sometimes these people are very insensitive when they want you to work these jobs and they don't even care if they're putting your life at risk over a profit. And that is just ridiculous. It really is. Um, and even in the last polar vortex, the U.S. Postal Service halted 
um, deliveries in several states temporarily until the temperature went up, you know, went up. And I think that is the sensible thing to do. Um, some of this mail can be halted. It, 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 it can't be that critical where somebody's got to risk their life to get letters to you. Come on. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen, and those of you in the areas that are affected by this new wave of polar vortex air, please be careful and prepare yourself to the best of your ability. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.